All right, guys, welcome to Slightly Technical Discussions. Today is a very special episode, and we're going to be talking about the Freyet power station, but we're going to be talking about the Freyet power station in detail. And we're going to be talking about resistive and reactive uh, loads. We're going to be talking about attenuation and all that good stuff. Now, naturally, we're also going to listen to some sound samples to actually hear how all this stuff sounds. I hope that you are as excited as I am about this video. Let's go. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to put all those timestamps over there. So if you're bored with me talking about theory, you can just go forward and listen to how it sounds. But the first thing that I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to introduce the power station to the people who don't know what this device is. Now, the power station is this. It is this amazing device made by Freyet Amplification. And this device is actually... Um, the best way to describe this device, actually, is to say that this device is an amazing solution to a big problem. Now, what is, this, what, what is the problem that we have? Well, the problem that we have is actually we play tube amplifiers. I guess I play tube amplifiers and you, because you're watching this video, you also play tube amplifiers. And tube amplifiers are amazing, but they're loud and you need to plug, plug a speaker into them. Otherwise, all bad things happen. So... The power station is a solution to this problem because it's going to make your tube amplifier quieter, but it's going to sound amazing. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, is the power station an attenuator? And the power station is not an attenuator. The power station is very, very different from an attenuator, but it does um, sort of like the end result is kind of similar because you're going to have your amplifier being quieter but the sound is going to be amazing. Now in this video, I'm not going to talk about attenuation. There are different ways how you can attenuate the um, signal in the amplifier, but um, the whole point is that this is the only right solution, all right? So <clears throat> let's keep ahead. The best way to think about the power station is, actually not the best way to think about it. The power station is a power amplifier. It is a power amplifier like any other power amplifier. It's a very nice, transparent, sort of like neutral pow power amplifier. It's packed with a lot of features, which we will discuss in this video in detail. But the first um, sort of um, thing that we're going to talk about in this video are those reactive and resistive loads. Why you would like you need a reactive load other than a resistive load and um, the importance of the reactive load is because the power station has a reactive load as the front end of this power amplifier okay that makes sense because let's say like this like if you would compare the power station to let's say a Marshall so both of them are amplifiers basically but the Marshall has the front end of the Marshall is actually a preamplifier that is designed to you know receive your guitar signal. So you plug your guitar in, you play through the preamplifier, you crank the gain, and then the power amplifier is gonna um, power the speakers, and that you get the Marshall sound. Now the difference between that and the power station is the power station doesn't have a preamplifier like the Marshall does. So the sort of place um, instead of the preamplifier is taken by the reactive load. Now, the, the way how this works is going to actually be explained here. I'm going to, I just made some uh, circuits over here. I'm going to explain um, in a bit um, how, this, um, how this circuit works. But it's important to say that the huge difference in signal here, like our guitar signals are very, very small. So the preamplifiers are designed like there is no big current running through them. And... Um, you know, it's designed with all these small components and it is a completely different thing from this because this whole thing is designed to receive a big signal. There's some current going through this because what the amplifier, the tube amp that we are using, what it's running into the power station is like fire, right? You crank a commercial and you connect it to the power station. What's going to happen is like everything that's going to, that was supposed to end up in the speaker, all that power is going to be soaked by the power station. That basically means that the front end of the power station is going to get hot and it needs to be designed with like big components, right? So not small resistors. I don't have a small one around here, but they do have a big one. So basically you need bigger resistors like this one and you need to heat sink them properly. And this is something that is done properly in this device. And I don't know if it's rated at 200 or 300 watts. You would have to look it up in the manual. I guess it's written in the back 
sorry I didn't prepare this, but let me see. 200 watts max, all right? So it's rated at 200 watts. That basically means that you can run, run like 200 watts of power into the front end of this thing and everything will be fine. You are not going to burn it. Okay, so now I want to talk about resistive and reactive loads. So what is the difference between resistive and reactive loads? So the resistive load being the simpler of the two is basically you take a resistor like this one and you just connect it instead of a speaker. Works perfectly fine. Just don't connect this small one into a Marshall. Um, you need a slightly bigger one and it needs to be properly heat synced. So you, you have a big resistor and uh, you connect it to your tube amplifier and you can actually run the tube amplifier. That's completely fine because nothing will happen to the tube amplifier. The resistor is going to get hot, but that's just um, nature. And uh, that's completely fine. Now, the reactive load is something that people designed. Um, basically, what they did is they designed uh, a speaker electronically. So by using a combination of these devices, so some combination of resistors, inductors, and capacitors, they're practically simulating what a speaker would look like in the eyes of the amplifier, if that makes sense. And these approximations are actually very, very um, close to what the speaker does, because the speaker has some electrical things happening there, obviously it has a coil, but it also has mechanical things, and um, all these things uh, sort of reflect into the electrical, so the mechanical things reflect into the electrical world, and the amplifier sees all these things. Now, when you have to make this all in electronics, they substi substituted uh, these mechanical things with some filters with capacitors and inductors, and it, they sort of have a very, very similar um, uh, sort of like, it's an, an approximation of a speaker. Uh, now we're going to take a look at something on the computer. Okay, so we have a very, very simple circuit over here and this 8 ohm resistor, let's imagine that this is our amplifier and this is the 8 ohm load resistor that we plugged in into the speaker out on the amplifier. Now what we are going to take a look at here, we're going to take a look at what the amplifier actually sees when you plug in an 8 ohm resistor. So let's simulate this circuit and let's do this for the sake of doing this. Um, pardon me. All right, and we can make this scale linear here so, so it represents what we want to see a little bit better. But basically what we are seeing is just a straight line and that basically says that the amplifier sees 8 ohms at 20 hertz, 8 ohms at 100 hertz, it sees 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz, it sees 8 ohms in, at 10 kilohertz, basically it always sees 8 ohms. Now this is completely fine and the amplifier will function, but when you plug a speaker into the amplifier, this is not what the amplifier sees. Now this is the part where they designed the reactive load and the reactive load looks something like this one. Now, I'm not saying that this is the one in the power section. I actually never opened the device. I don't really care what's inside, but this is pretty much a, you know, textbook example of what a uh, load should look like. It is probably something similar to this one, although the values could potentially be different. But let's take a look at this now. So we simulate this circuit and let's take a look. Right, let's simulate it. Whoa, wait. All right. I like it being green, and this was a very lame way to make it green. Now, what we are going to do here, do some math, we're going to change this to linear. Uh, all right, so look at this. This is actually what our amplifier sees when it's going into a reactive load. So it basically sees different levels of impedance depending on the frequency, all right? So basically it's, it sees a very, very high impedance at a certain frequency, which is like sort of um, below 100 Hertz. And this is the frequency uh, of, the, of the speaker where you have the resonant frequency of the speaker. So this is actually the resonant frequency of the speaker and it has a very high 
impedance. So uh, the, the dampening at this frequency is going to be very, very high. And that actually changes how the, ampli how the amplifier's power section uh, delivers power to the speaker. It changes it a lot. And you can also see that here the impedance rises at it, as the frequency rises. So you, that will actually result in attenuation in higher frequencies. So this is actually, I wanted to demonstrate this. If you compare this to the line that we had over here, basically you have a straight line over straight blue line over here and the green line is representing our um, reactive load. Now, reactive loads can be different and you can design them in different ways and you can manipulate them in different ways. And well, here's the thing. Normally when these uh, companies design these reactive loads and the reason why some of the reactive loads actually sound different than others is basically what they can do is actually they can design it, the reactive load to resemble a certain type of speaker. And usually what they do is they actually select a certain speaker that is mostly used, used with amplifiers and then they create a reactive load that sort of resembles that particular speaker. Usually in the industry it's going to be something like a greenback or a V30 or something like this. And the power station is actually packed with some features where you can actually manipulate this whole thing which I just demonstrated so you would get like a different response from the amplifier. Now that I mentioned that, Take a look at this. So the power station has some of the controls in front of it. I hope that you can see this correctly. From, uh, all right. So these switches here, they actually manipulate what I just shown you in the um, uh, simulation over there. So if you put them all down to flat, what you're getting basically is a resistive load. And if you go to the upper positions, um, you're basically getting some kind of uh, reactive load where you can actually, if you switch it up to, to these uh, like deep and edge positions, it just changes some parts over there and just uh, makes the reactive load a little bit different. Uh, but it's actually a very, very, very useful feature on this device. Also, it's worth mentioning that this is, I think, the second version of the power station. And um, the biggest difference between the first version and the second version is that this one actually has a pad and I would definitely suggest that you buy um, sometimes you can find like used ones like the first version but if you have a big amplifier such as like Marshall's high watts oranges and stuff like this which are very 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 loud and when you want to play them cranked it just doesn't work without this pad thing. So moving on from this we need to explain actually how this device actually works. So what we have we have this load right and we have this power amplifier now the power amplifier itself is just like a power amplifier it has a, this is a 50 60 watt version so it basically has 6l6s inside there is a 100 watt version which has 6550s and um, I guess slightly, maybe some slightly different voltages or something just has a little bit more power, but the power amplifier in general, it sounds like a power amplifier with a lot of negative feedback. It's just like neutral and uh, absolutely great for what it's supposed to be doing. And there is also one small tube, obviously for the phase inverter. Now, what you do, like how do you get the signal from this reactive load to the amplifier? And uh, for that, let's get back into the circuit and I'm gonna explain this in a second. So basically what you wanna do is if you are connecting, so this is our amplifier and you're connecting the load to the amplifier, the load is supposed to soak all this power from the amplifier, but what, what you can actually do is you can actually take a line out. And this is a line out that was usually used in, all, in the old amplifiers and it's just a resistive divider. So basically what you're going to do is you're gonna make a resistive divider and um, it's supposed to look like something like this. And uh, sorry, we need to connect it to ground over here. Now, listen, um, you can obviously, um, I don't know, some, uh, some uh, resistor sizes for this would be um, whatever. So, so it needs to attenuate a lot and we need to be somewhere in the kilo ohm range. And let's say we're gonna use one 
meg and we are going to use here let's say 47k or something like this so we're going to get a huge factor of attenuation now usually this is a little bit more complicated because they are going to put some kind of you could put a potentiometer over there so you could um uh, attenuate it more or or less but usually you just want to get a fraction okay so this is the post-production me i just want to jump in uh with uh, something um over here what i was talking about uh, these um line outs um um, those resistors that I wrote over there those values were the first ones that came to my mind but actually I would not practically use those values so just for the people who are going to write comments about uh, that those are the wrong values you just want to have some kind of like 20x attenuation approximately and normally I would use smaller values in the range of like tens of kilo ohms because uh, these resistors even though this is going to work I guess it would be a little bit noisier so I would use smaller values in a Especially if I wanted to use like a potentiometer to regulate all this, it's better to use um, maybe a little bit smaller value resistors. So going back. So the signal is uh, huge over here. And you just want to get the fraction of the signal and you, you want to take it from here. So that, that's basically how, how that works. You take a line out and then you connect that line out to the power amplifier. And basically then you can as we would say, reamp it. So you can then amplify that small portion of the signal through the amplifier, which is very transparent, and you're going to basically get um, the sound that you have from your tube amplifier, but now you can sort of, it is a small signal again, and you can sort of manipulate it through this amplifier, and you can use the volume knob and make it as loud as you want. Now, this is a very simplified version here in this device. It's a little bit more sophisticated because you have line outs. You also have a balanced line out. So to get the balanced line out, you can do it in a, um, some kind of active electronics or in transformer. Um, but not only that you can use this device for um, sort of attenuating a big amplifier, you can use this device to um, connect a small amplifier. Let's say you have a 5 watt amplifier, which sounds great, and especially sounds great when it's cranked, but it's just not loud enough to play in a band. Basically, you do the same thing. You connect it to the speaker in, um, actually to the amplifier in, in the uh, power station, and then you reamp it and you just make it louder with this device, all right? So that is another sort of way how you can use this uh, device. And moving on, we have an amazing feature in this device, which uh, is the effects loop. It has a very nice, very good sounding effects loop, which is basically using this line signal and sending it through. You can use some pedals or you can use rack gear or whatever you want. You can connect it through the effects loop and then return it and that stuff is going to be amplified. So basically when you have all these amplifiers which sound only, which only sound good cranked, um, you can take this cranked signal, you can run it through some gear, you can get it back into power station, you can reamp it, you can make it louder, and it's going to sound glorious. So this is one feature that this device, it's a great solution for, for amplifiers like the Plexi Marshall, which doesn't have a master volume, and, and it gets all the tone from the power section, so there is no point in adding an effects loop. Uh, to the Marshall, this is the proper solution for this. Now, another very important feature of this um, device is actually the line out. And the line out is used very, very frequently. And I am using the line out for recording guitars. Now, what you're getting from the line out, you're getting the small signal from your amplifier, basically what I just shown you over there. You have a, there is a balanced line out and you have some small potentiometer where you can um, adjust the line level. So you can get the, an amazing signal level for your um, audio interface and you can record this line signal but there is a problem with this so the line signal that you get from the amplifier is a very it's a very very harsh sound it is an all it is just an unusable sound unless you're I guess Mike Oldfield or something like this but but it is a really unusable sound and what you need to do is you need to run some kind of speaker simulation over it and um, it is easily done today with IRs, and that's how I do uh, a lot of the sound samples uh, that I do here. I would say that this is the only thing that I wish this device had. I wish it had some speaker simulation, but they discussed this, and you know, I guess it's the industry, and they also, Fright Amplification released another device that has this whole thing, uh, has the speaker simulation, which sounds great. 
they say they couldn't put it inside and I sort of I, I believe them you know because this whole thing is packed with features it was made to be as small as possible but I guess they could put like a teeny weeny you know speaker simulator there because then you can take this device to your gig directly and plug in um, to the PA to the mixer and um, for years I've been using this um, Palmer PDI-09 um, it sounded great you know and and I didn't have to uh, bring any microphones didn't have any feedback or anything so th this it was a great way um, for um, getting my signal into the PA so I wish this device had that now I discussed a lot of things now we discussed the effects loop which is an amazing feature I will not demo the effects loop because it's like an effects loop like any other just sounds great the line out is something that you will hear and normally when you watch my videos that that's what you hear because i'm playing the pride power station always through the power station and i'm taking the line signal and i'm putting an ir on top of it that's the easiest way for me to record because i really don't have conditions here to be loud the next thing we're gonna do is i'm gonna plug all this stuff in and i want to show you what all this stuff sounds like all right, so we're back. So I have everything hooked up here. We're using this old angle amplifier, which has been repacked into a head and it's completely modded and maybe we're gonna make a different video about it. But this angle amplifier is connected to the Freyet power station. It is very loud, all right? And if I'm using the line out from the power station, correct, connecting directly into my audio interface and into my DAW and I'm using an impulse response in the chain. And this is the sound that I get. All right, so once again, what you're hearing, you're hearing the audio interface, you're hearing the line out from the power station going into the DAW. Now I wanna talk about um, how to properly use this device, all right? So one thing to say here, the power station is on now, but I can actually switch it off. It doesn't need to be on if I want to use the line out, all right? So. So it doesn't need to be on. However, if you're using a very loud amplifier such as like a Marshall and you're like blowing it completely like on 10 loud into the Fryad power station, I would suggest switch it on. It has a fan inside and the fan makes uh, like better air circulation and air circulation is very important for this device because when you're blowing like real power into this device, you really want circulation, you really want those heat sinks to be um, properly ventilated and then you will achieve the maximum from this device because otherwise you can actually damage it if you are like, I mean, it, it's made well, but just use the fan if you're blowing a, a, a huge amplifier into it on 10 all right now in, in this case of this amplifier uh, it's really loud but to be honest like i don't i would not really switch the power station on with using with this amplifier it's, it's not actually that loud and it doesn't really get hot you can always touch it over here you can check if it's hot but you always have the option to switch it on engage the fan and it works great now the next thing we're going to demonstrate here is actually um, how the whole attenuation thing works now i have a speaker down here and this is just a random speaker that i use for uh, repair work and um, i will connect the speaker now to the power station let's do that okay so the amazing speaker is connected and uh, uh, i will switch the amplifier on now but the power station is in bypass mode all right and i'm gonna leave the lavalier mic on and it's gonna be very 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 loud here all right <laughs> ridiculously loud but listen to what happens now basically what I'm demoing now is that you engage the power station it is going to make your amplifier sound just quieter not through means of attenuation but through means of reamping and there are a lot of YouTube videos where you can watch and how they compare. Uh, does it sound the same? And you know, they're micing cabinets and everything. Um, it sounds just fine. It sounds great. 
and um, I'm completely fine with the 50 watt version, even though may maybe if I would ever need a 100 watt version, but it's like these um, power sections are designed to be um, quite transparent, so they really don't color the sound. You're gonna get a great sound out of this. Now, the next thing I want to um, actually demo here is we're gonna be manipulating the front end of the power station and this is exa exactly the thing that I was talking about in the beginning of the video where we were uh, showing the difference between reactive and resistive load and now we are gonna take a listen, all right? So first, what I wanna do is I wanna disengage the speaker. I'm running the power station without the speaker. Again, we are listening to uh, the DAW. Now, here's the thing, we have Two switches over here. One of the switches manipulates the low end, the other switch manipulates the high end. If we use the flat position, I will, this, I will have this stuff uh, written in the video, if we use the flat position then we are sort of using the resistive load, the mid position is sort of like the normal one and then um, we can switch it um, upwards and then we're gonna listen to a change in uh, this certain frequency spectrum that we are manipulating. So now we have both switches in the middle and this is what we get. All right, now I'm gonna switch to flat. I'm gonna switch them both. And if, if we switch both of these switches to the flat position, we are practically getting a resistive load, all right? This is what we hear now. All right, so I can say what I'm hearing. First of all, we lost some volume. To be perfectly honest, we didn't lose a lot of volume, but we, we lost some uh, of the loudness effect because we sort of lost a little bit of highs and a little bit of low end, um, but it, it also feels a little bit different to play. That is not to say that there is something wrong with this sound. This is actually very, very useful because uh, you can actually um, tame some amplifiers which have a problem in, a cert in certain frequencies. For example, if um, we needed more bass, I could leave the um, low end into the warm position and we are going to uh, use the flat position in the, um, for, for the upper frequency range, right? So we sort of retained the low end, but we kind of tamed the high end. Now this is one way to use it obviously and um, I would like to uh, go back to the mid position which is sort of like the normal reactive load. I'm gonna play something and then I'm gonna switch both of the switches to the upper position where we're gonna basically get more highs and more lows, all right? <laughs> So you heard what it sounds now, it's like very, very different. You get this loudness effect and actually it sounds great. And for this particular amplifier, I think I would, um, I would use those upper positions. Um, I would need to check the low end. I don't have um, extremely good monitoring over here, but um, it's great if you have a little bit like a, like a dull amplifier, like you can um, 
liven it up a little bit and you can also hear that there is a huge difference as I said again like if you're using the resistive thing it's a little bit lower in volume and uh, because of the loudness effect but it's um, if I would uh, play now uh, this video I know this video is very, very long but if I would play now I would increase um, the preamp a little bit and and um, we sort of compensate for the volume but you sort of get the picture okay so this video was quite long but the whole idea for, the, for this video was actually to make a proper review of the power station and actually explain how it works because I see that people have um, the exact same questions constantly and there's some great guitar players, much better guitar players than me that uh, demonstrated how the power station works and how they use it um, but they don't really explain these sort of like technical things about it but I really do think that the guitar players should get a little bit technical and understand the gear that they're using because A they're gonna get better tones B their gear will be reliable and it will not you know like burn and, and make problems in the middle of the gig so that's sort of the reason for this channel uh, existing now um, I hope that you liked what you heard um, I do love this device. This device changed my life. I have a lot of tube amplifiers and I always use the power station and to be perfectly honest I could never hear those tube amplifiers properly until I got the power station because it's a it's a huge problem listening to stuff very loud. You need a good room, you need good speakers and even when I got a good cabinet then my room is boomy and your ears get tired after like five minutes of playing and like then you don't really know what you're hearing so this device solves all these problems in the beginning of the video I said that this device is an amazing solution to a huge problem and um, now since we're <laughs> closing closing the video I would like to say that um, this is an amazing device that solves a lot of big problems right not one big problem solves a lot of problems and is packed it's full of features it's done right it sounds great and I would uh, absolutely suggest to everybody who is um, who has these problems like me and whoever is interested in this kind of thing like, this is gonna change your life this is like the best thing that I bought in a long time I hope my girlfriend is not gonna watch this video now um, the power station guys thank you for watching this video Please subscribe, like this video. Uh, this channel is small, but we're going um, slowly. Please follow me on Instagram. You have the links down below. And I'll be making more videos, post some comments, post some questions. I'll be glad to answer them. And yeah, once again, thank you for watching. And I'll be seeing you in the next video very, very soon. See you.